In this episode of Terminal Velocity, we're going to build our own command line utility that is really just a composition of other great tools. We're going to use a bunch of really popular tools, all of which will be available on your operating systems package manager. We're going to be using AG, RG, FZF, SK, BAT, AUX, SED, PBCopy, and Vim. All of these either come installed on your operating system or some variation of them will, or you can install them through your package manager. So we want to build a tool that allows us to copy a line of code from this repository to our clipboard. So let's get started. We're here in my dot files repository, just as a working example. And for starters, we can use ag dot to find every line of code in this repository. By default, it works on the current folder. Dot is just going to match any character. And so as you can see, we're highlighting everything and it's just printed out every single file. So that's obviously a little too much output to work with. So we're going to pipe this to FZF. Now FZF is a fuzzy finding utility. If I hit enter, you can see we still have the list of all of these lines of code. Um, now we actually have a format where we've got the file name, colon, the line number, colon, and then the line of code. But at my cursor down at the bottom here, I can now actually search for something and it will filter this list of lines of code. So for example, let's say I know there's an alias I have for updating the latest commit on a branch. So if I search for uh, gcan, which stands for git commit amend no edit, you can see we found the alias gcan right here. Cool. Now if I hit enter, FCF pipes the line that we have selected to standard out, and so right now it's just printed out to my terminal here. You might think we're pretty much done here. If I pipe this to pbcopy, and then I type uh, gcan again and hit enter, nothing is printed out to the command line, but if I paste, you can see that the line was now copied to my clipboard. We're getting pretty close already. However, there's a little bit more we can do here. If we run our tool again, we're seeing this individual line of code, but we can't really see it in the context of the file that it's in, and sometimes that's going to be important. Well, Fuzzy Finder will actually let us do that. So what we can do with FCF is a couple of things. First, let's give it a delimiter flag, and we'll set the delimiter to a colon. So what this means is there's multiple pieces to the lines of input, and we want to break them up on the colon. Now, of course, if we had colons in our line of code, this might not work. We'd have to get a little bit fancy with how this works. But for now, let's assume that we don't have colons in our line of code. So next, we want to use the preview flag. And preview actually allows us to show something about the selected line in a panel on the right. So for example, we could do preview cat, and then let's put one inside curly braces. One is going to be the first argument that we get from the FCF line, because we've delimited that by a colon. The first line is going to be the file name. So if we do this, we start on my vimrc file, and so we have the vimrc file right here. If we move to gcan, now we're looking at my aliases file, and so on the other side here, we can actually see the aliases file printed out here. So cat is pretty useful, but what would be really great is if we could get some syntax highlighting here. And for this, we can use another utility called bat. Now bat is kind of like a drop in replacement for cat, except it has a bunch of cool features on top of it, but we're not just going to pass the file. Let's say uh, color equals always. So we're going to syntax highlight this file. And then we can even highlight more than just the syntax highlighting. Let's say a uh, highlight line. Let's pass it our second argument, which we know is the line number that we're currently looking at. So if we do this now, if we go to gcan, first of all, we can see our alias file here is printed out with line numbers and a header and uh, syntax highlighting. So that's bat in action. And if we scroll down here, we can see right here, line 53 is highlighted. But I think this is pretty cool and a great way to see, in our case, the line of code that we want to copy in the context of where it is in that file. All right, so if I hit enter, of course, right now that's printing out to the command line. But instead, what we want to do is find just the last portion of this and copy that to the clipboard. So this is where awk comes in. Awk is a really powerful utility that I mainly just use for selecting a particular column in a line of text. And in this case, we want the third column. So let's set our field separator to a colon. And then our awk script is going to be very simple. It's just going to be print dollar sign three. So if we run this again, let's do gcan, hit enter. Now we can see we're printing out just the line of code that we want. Now, in this case, this line of code has no white space at the beginning, but one thing I'm going to throw in here uh, just to be safe for those situations is let's do sed. Sed is a great way to do a find and replace in a particular line. And we're going to say at the start of the line, if we have any white space, uh, any number of white space characters, replace that with nothing. And then finally, let's just throw our PB copy on the end here. And this is the entire tool that I want to use. 
So if I hit enter now and I find that alias, we can see we've got our view on the side here. If I hit enter and then I just paste that into the terminal, you can see that we are copying just that line of code. So this is the solution to our problem. We've used one, two, three, four, five, six different command line utilities to build up a tool that solves a specific problem that we have. Now, the really cool thing about the command line these days is that there are so many great tools we can use. If we go back up to our command here, we can actually replace FZF with skim. SK. Skim is like an FCF clone written in Rust instead of, I think FCF is in C. And so I think Skim is in a lot of cases faster. And the nice thing about Skim is it uses the same flags. Delimiter and preview will be exactly the same here. Uh, the other one we could change out is uh, instead of AG, the silver searcher, let's use RG, rip grep. And the one thing that we would have to add for rip grep is it does not include line numbers by default. So let's use the line number flag. And now if we hit enter, you can see we're in the exact same situation. Let's look for GCAN. And now you can see we have GCAN showing up. We've got our file still showing up here on the side. And if I hit enter, and paste, you can see that we are successfully copying and pasting this line. And of course, we could combine AG and Skim or RG and FCF. That's the beauty of these command line tools these days. There's so many great options that you can use. All right, so this is how I can copy a line of code from the repository that I'm in. One of my coworkers was doing something similar, except they were opening the file in Vim instead of just copying that line to the clipboard. And that I love. So let's do this a little bit differently. I think we're gonna go back to our awk command here and we're gonna print out something a little bit different. So we still want our field separator to be the colon, but instead of printing field three, we wanna print out field two, which is our which is our line number and field one, which is our file name. And we're gonna format this. So inside quotes here, I'm gonna put a plus in front of the two and then between one and two, we're gonna put a space. And if we hit enter here, and let's search for GCAN again, you'll see we have plus 53, which is the line number, and then the path to the file. Now this is exactly the syntax we need to pass to Vim to open up this file starting on that particular line. For example, if I just do Vim and paste that in, and we open this up, you can see that we open the file directly to line 53. So let's go ahead and wrap this whole command then in a subshell and we'll put vim in front of that. And so now what we're saying is open vim and the result of this command should be the arguments that we pass to vim. And so if we hit enter, we see our familiar experience here. We can search for gcan hit enter and boom, we are in Vim at the particular line of code that we searched for. And so now that we have these two commands, we can add them to our aliases file. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste those down here right at the bottom. I guess I could make these an alias, but then I'm gonna have to manage a lot of quoting, I think. So maybe simpler just to put these into a function and maybe we'll call this one uh, copy line and then we can call this one open at line. And so now we can run copy line gcan and if I paste that, there we go, we have our alias copied. Let's do the other one, open at line, gcan, boom. Perfect, all right, our aliases are complete. I love the simplicity and focus of all of these shell tools that we can then use as building blocks to build tools that simply do the one thing we need them to do. So if you have tools that you have built from other command line utilities, or have other great packages that you find really handy, definitely let me know about them in the comments. I'll have links to these aliases and my dot files, as well as all of these command line tools that we were using in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.